So when he comes across a cult he thinks can help fill the void inside him, he's eager to join. Everybody Wait, 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 wait. I'll do whatever you think is right. Wait. You're just so confused. Listen, you, you don't have to be confused. People, we're adults now, and adults do not get confused. Premature birth. Joshua Matthews might not make it. I love you, but I want you to make that and get out of here. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, loss. It truly seems like Sean could never catch a break. The woman he believed to be his mom, Verna, and his dad, Chet, both leave him to fend for himself on more than one occasion. And it obviously impacts him in profound ways. I, I can't keep a relationship. I drive all my friends away. I hurt everybody I care about. So when his dad comes back to town and suffers a heart attack, he's finally open and honest about how he feels. Why couldn't you just stick around? Get out of the way. While the operatives of Sector 5 fought valiantly against the world's evils, like homework and flossing, we have to wonder if they were ever decommissioned. Number five got the goods. 
Something tells us they were exempt from this practice, which would make for the perfect reboot of the show. We'd love to see the members of the kids next door get together to battle the evils of teenagehood or adulthood. Teenagers, they make me sick. Considering the storylines were already intense in later seasons of the show, we just know an adult version of it would be absolutely amazing. Great! Would make for the perfect... of the show. We'd love to see the members of the kids next door get together to battle the evils of teenagehood or adulthood. about where Spider-Man related content has been blowing up like crazy before. The release of the latest live action Marvel film generated hype for the web slinger not only before the movie came out, but also heavily afterwards. It's worth acknowledging the fact that, just to like the You're Not Peter meme from the film's trailers, YouTube user Free Gordon has been responsible for pushing much of the popularity of these trends with excellent editing skills and videos garnering hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of views. Of course, that's not to say a plethora of other creators haven't consistently been contributing to Ned's ever-increasing omnipresence, but noting that a particular creator has worked extremely hard on extending the Spider-Verse is certainly well worth the time. After all, who is responsible for generating much of the ongoing value of film franchises these days if not the meme creators who seek to mutate and evolve the content provided, free of charge? Memes have the ability to extend and improve the life of intellectual properties greatly, often driven by a community willing to do so without any financial incentive. It's a shame movie studios are often so tough on those who seek to transform their works, considering the ultimate value they bring. Perhaps in the near future we'll see creators like Free Boredom hired out by massive studios like Disney in order to promote their brand via excellent memes, but at this stage they may lose the magic in the process. Essentially, Ned Leeds becoming an internet icon is no accident, and yet whilst he was designed to be popular, it has only become possible with the help of digital artists working outside of Disney's ever-present clutches. What meme would you guys like me to give a lesson in next? Let me know. Mr. Incredible Becoming Uncanny is a further corruption of an already corrupted image, that of a beloved cartoon character being saddled with what appears to be an intense existential crisis. A traumatized Mr. Incredible is something that should have been covered on this channel a lot sooner, but every time it pops up and dies off, it only seems to come back stronger. As a result, now there is an outstanding amount of history surrounding this extremely resilient meme. At any rate, it all kicked off in 2020, as you may remember the realistic version of everyone's favourite superhero family being uploaded by Twitter user Nathan Shipley on the 16th of October. The panel with Mr. Incredible would go on to be utilised as a classic good thing versus bad thing structure until late November in which we'd see the classic black and white version created by Reddit user Paralyzed Parrot 243 This would float around for an entire year, cementing itself as a staple of meme culture until it would go on to be adopted as people that know versus people who don't know in early September this year by a dude named Dapper Dildo. Truly, this is a rich and cultural backstory worthy of telling a thousand generations. Then, on the 27th of September this year, we'd start to see it evolve into the structure we experience today, that of Mr. Incredible becoming uncanny, first popularized by YouTube user Musikos Kinikos. This format would be picked up and expanded on by TikTok user FishyStick1A in early December, adding plenty more creepy images and music. From there on, it has gone on to proliferate and develop in different ways over time, culminating in plenty of takes on the original. Plus, the fact that songs from the famous Everywhere at the End of Time album are often present is no accident, considering they've been utilized for memes on a similar spectrum previously. It's impossible to ignore the influence of Trolls here, which has also garnered a massive following in tandem with the use of Everywhere at the End of Time. It's fascinating how a simple meme demonstrating what an image might look like going through a black and white